Well, here you have the Digilog clock. As you can tell, it has three meters. It displays the time on these meters in hours, in minutes, and seconds. It's a prototype. Here's a close-up of the gauges. As you can tell, they're calibrated in hours, minutes, and seconds with a PM indicating light as well. So it is reading 10, 11, and about 44 seconds. It is discrete in the sense that each meter displays a single value until the meter before it recycles. So you'll see what happens. The seconds will go back to zero and the minutes will increment by one. And here is a close-up of the minutes and seconds meters. And as you can tell, it is one minute. It is about the end of one minute about five seconds to go and you'll see the second hand then retreat to zero and then the minute hand will increment by one. And there you go. Here's a layout of the clock then. You'll see the top uh, of the plastic container and the plastic container really wasn't the intended piece of equipment. It uh, just made for an easier uh, development of the prototype. At the top you have the PM indicating LED, the three meters. Below the three meters is a light sensor that will shut down the meters when it's dark. No sense in having them move. And then on the left you can see two buttons and two lights, although they're not easy to see now. But that's how you set it. And then on the right are two toggle switches. One is for a fun mode called uh, warp mode. And the bottom right hand switch is to switch from daylight saving time to standard time. Here is a close up of the hour indicator and as I switch from daylight saving time to standard time you'll see that the hour meter is set back by one and when I flip back to daylight saving time it's set up again. This is how the light sensor works. You can tell that when the lights are on the meters are active. If it senses that there's not enough light the meters go to zero and then the meters come back. This is to uh, keep the mechanisms from uselessly wearing out in the nighttime. This is how you set the clock then. Press and hold the set mode button for five seconds. And you'll see the set hours light come on. Um, in this particular version you can only set hours and minutes. The seconds are always reset to zero. Now that the set mode is active if I wanted to send it for say 6 in the morning I would just push the advance button watching the meter display 11 12 a.m. 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then if I wanted to set the minutes let's say it was 6:30 press the set mode button again the set minute light illuminates and I advance it until it reads 30 when I have the time desired and when it is time for me to synchronize, if I want to do that, I simply press the set mode button one last time and it starts incrementing. Power for the Digilog clock comes from a standard 120 volt wall wart, as you can see here. And this particular one, I believe, kicks out a 9 volt DC uh, power and uh, it is brought then into the side over here through a plug and as you can tell when the power is removed all the meters and lights go to zero. However when power is returned because of a battery backup uh, real-time clock the uh, normal time is resumed when power comes back on again. Well, here's what the project looks like on the inside. At the heart of it you can see an Arduino uh, Uno uh, with a Adafruit prototype shield. Uh, onto that are some resistors and some connectors. That is fed over here to three adjusting uh, trim pots and the heart of the system right here is a chrono dot that keeps track of the time and it communicates uh, serially with the Arduino. 
above it you can see the three meters seconds minutes and hours the switches are located here along with the LEDs and uh, one more feature then is the warp mode which was kind of done just for fun and uh, there's not much to it you just flip the switch up into warp mode and it's just a little bit of fun with the meters deflecting at uh, different rates and also the lights changing as well and there you have it the Digilog clock.